Hi, it's Kate, and this is the first video for week 9 of Math 23. This is Module 3. We'll be introducing a few new topics uh, in our study of mathematics, but we'll also be sort of combining some of the topics that we've been studying over the past two modules. You'll see some elements of linear algebra come into play, you'll see some elements of analysis come into play, and it's really important that you take sort of the information that you've mastered in Module 1 as well as the information you've mastered in Module 2 and see how sometimes they tend to blend together in really elegant and neat ways. But first, let's talk a little bit about topology. It's an extremely broad field. Some people spend their entire career studying topology, but for us, let's begin with the basics. We start with a set X and we single out some of its subsets. We define them as open sets. And the only requirement on a topology is that the collection of open sets follows these rules. The first is that the empty set and the set X itself are both open, whatever open may mean. And we'll talk about the definition of open in a moment. And also the union of any finite or infinite collection of open sets is also open. This should say either collection or number here, not both. Also, the intersection of two open sets is open. It follows by induction that the intersection of n open sets is open, but be careful here, the intersection of infinitely many open sets is not necessarily open, and we'll get to an example of that in just a moment. Now, an interesting way to think about finite topology, which is where we have a finite number of elements, uh, is using this website model. And think of this as a metaphor for topology in general. This is just a way for you guys to look at an example and reason through which sets should be open based on what the intersections are and what the unions are. So that's really the purpose of this particular example. So let's take a look at it now. Here's our finite set. It's a set of websites. Those are the elements in this particular set. So our set X that we're talking about are these websites and they are numbered one through six. And in our particular model, we say an open set, what our definition of open means, is a set that's defined by the property that no page in the set can be reached by a link from outside the set. Now this doesn't mean that topology in general is uh, specified or defined in this way. This is just for this particular example, for this metaphor. And so we need to show that this definition is consistent with the axioms for open sets. That if this is the definition for open, then that also means that the intersection of two open sets is open or any n open sets is open, and that the, inters the union of uh, any open sets is also open. So let's take a look. Well, first the empty set. That's the first rule. The empty set must be an open set if on a topology. So the empty set contains no pages at all. And since it contains no pages, there's no page that can be reached by an outside link. Okay, according to that definition, so far so good. It's adequately defining open. But remember that the next rule is that the set X itself, the set of all the elements, uh, must also be open. So our set X is all six of these pages. And according to our definition of open, it is open because there's no other page. There's no page seven, there's no page eight. There's no other page on the site from which an outside link could come. Now let's take a look here. If sets A and B are open, no page in either can be reached by an outside link. And so their union is also open. Okay, that seems fair enough. If sets A and B are open, so is their intersection A intersect B. How do we know that? Well, proof by contraposition. Suppose that that intersection is not open, which means it contains a page that can be reached by an outside link. But if that link comes from A, then B is not open because there's a page in A that can be linked to a page that is also in B. If that link comes from B, then A is not open because there's a page in A that can be linked to from a page in B. And if that link comes from outside both A and B, then neither A nor B are open because there's a page outside both of those sets that can 
link into A and B. So yes, according to our definition of open, which means that uh, there are no, no page can be reached to by a link from outside the set, that is that adequately makes the empty set open, the set X open, the union of any two sets open, the intersection of sets open, so it is an adequate definition of openness because it allows us to satisfy the necessary axioms. You'll in fact do some cool sample problems with this particular website model of for finite topology where you prove different things using this particular metaphor, like I said, or this particular example, and you'll practice being able to define which sets are open and which sets are not. You may be wondering what topology looks like in R or RN because obviously the website model of topology is just a particular example, just sort of gives you practice for how to think about openness. But the usual way to introduce a topology for the set R is to say that any open interval is an open set and so is the empty set. So basically what we can say is that the set of points X that are within epsilon of x0, with epsilon being greater than 0, is an open set. So you're probably most familiar to looking at this, like that. So that's, that's perfectly fine for talking about which sets are open when we're in R or Rn. Now when we said before that the intersection of an infinite number of open sets is not necessarily open, we didn't give any examples, I said we would in a moment, but let's take a look at, th at this. Look at the infinite intersection of the open sets that go from negative 1 over n to 1 over n. And as you take n to infinity, the intersection of those sets is just going to be one single point, 0, because each higher value for n is going to make this interval smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. 0 is the one element that is in all of those sets and a single point is a closed set. The usual way to introduce a topology for the set Rn is to decree that any open ball, now we go from an interval to an open ball as we move from R to Rn, which an open ball is a set of points, um, this is the set of points is any point x that's within epsilon of x naught, where the distance between the two is less than epsilon, and epsilon greater than zero, obviously. That's, that's your definition of open set um, in Rn. So let's take a look at some more concepts of general topology and get our vocabulary going as we talk about these new ideas. So you probably will find them pretty intuitive. There are only a couple that are very new. They're a bit difficult to reason with, so we have several uh, sample problems and small group problems and homework problems using these definitions. So first of all, you know, it, they apply to the website finite topology, but really you want to sort of get them down in your mind for working in R and RN. So closed sets. What is a closed set? Well, a closed set is one whose complement, which means the points that are not in the set, um, is where the complement is open. So that's why it's extremely surprising for students when I say that this interval is a closed set. Well, what's the complement of this interval? Those are the points in the real, the set of elements in the real numbers that are not in this interval. It's an open set, so that automatically defines this to actually be a closed interval. Now, what you might be saying, that can't possibly be true. What this is not is bounded. And normally it's very typical in a univariate calculus class to never be taught the difference between closed and bounded, but now you guys completely know that. Note that this is different than saying a closed set is a set that is not open. A closed set is a set whose complement is open. But there are lots of sets that are neither closed nor open, and there are also sets that are both open and closed. So be very specific with yourself. If its complement is open, then it is a closed set. What other words do we want to use? Neighborhood. When we talk about the neighborhood of a point, it's any set that has a subset that is an open set containing the point. 
So a neighborhood itself doesn't have to be open. Again, a neighborhood of a point is any set that contain, that has as a subset an open set that contains our point. What's the closure of a set? Well, first of all, notationally speaking, we do this bar over the set. So when we do a bar, that means the closure of the set. That's the smallest closed set that contains a particular set A. Uh, the intersection of all the closed sets that contain the set A. That's something that you'll be proving as well. We'll be discussing later. The interior of a set A, which has this open circle above it, that's the largest open set that is contained in the set A, or the union of all the open subsets of a set A. And then last but not least, the boundary of A. Note that the notation here is the same partial D that we use for derivatives. So that's the boundary of A. That's the set of all points with the property that any neighborhood of the points on the boundary include points that are in the set A and also points that are in the complement of the set A. So the boundary of A is the difference between the closure of A and its interior. Here's a drawing. This is my beautiful artistic rendering. The red boundary and the blue interior together make up the closure. So everything I've drawn is the closure. The interior is just the blue part, so the boundary is the difference between all of it and the blue part, so just the red outline. So just like you would think of boundary, that's what the boundary is. Let's talk about a topological definition of convergence. We, we say a sequence S of n converges to a limit S if for every open set A containing S, there exists a capital N such that for all little n, the same index is greater than capital N, uh, A sub n is in the set A. And in other words, the points of the sequence eventually get inside the set A and they stay there. So when we specialize to R and Rn, that means a sequence A sub n of real numbers converges to a limit if for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists an index such that all the index after that the points are within epsilon of each other. Basically, open sets defined as open intervals. Or we say a sequence of points in Rn converge to, converges to a limit, uh, a limit point A. If for all epsilon greater than zero, there is some index such that all the indices after that particular index are within epsilon of the point A. So open sets are then defined by open balls instead of open intervals in Rn. So the sequence converges if and only if the sequences of coordinates all converge. So you have to look coordinate by coordinate by coordinate by coordinate uh, for all the elements in the sequence. We'll be playing a lot more with that and it will certainly be part of uh, some of the proofs that we'll be doing in class this week.